Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Ongava Game Reserve. We'll be joining Stewart with his routine gyro flight over the Ongava Game Reserve and see what it's from above. Hey! We have just returned from an early morning gyroplane patrol um, around the Ongava Game Reserve. We carry out this patrol a few times a week and the purpose of this patrol is to monitor animals and the game reserve from the air. Generally there's two of us in the aeroplane so we have maximum number of people um, observing. So I have an APU member, he travels with me and he's always armed with a 300 millimeter DSLR camera and anything of interest we can then photograph um, and GPS the coordinates of, of what, whatever we're finding. Some of the stuff we looked at this morning, we were in both the western end of the game reserve and the the southeastern corner and we were looking for specific animals specifically rhino this ties into our monitoring program and so those coordinates and those photographs because we're able to identify the individual animals from the photographs we take those photographs and gps coordinates get um, entered into our sighting information and database we can obviously add that into the monitoring that we do on the ground um, with the ground patrols the gyroplane has been on Angava for a couple of years it was initially bought as a monitoring platform which is what we're using it for what we used it for this morning but it has a whole bunch of other functions as well which has been um, quite successful at one of the other areas that we've used it in is firefighting so during the dry season if we've had a good rainy season you get quite a lot of grass around the property and um late August, September, you often get lightning that can ignite the dry bush at the end of the end of the dry season, causing bushfires. Now, having a, an air wing that is above the firefighting effort to coordinate firefighting efforts on the ground is critical and very successful, containing fires to smaller areas on the property and thus reducing the risk of damage to property and um, and lodges and fences. We also use the, the aircraft for monitoring of our boundary fences. We have a common boundary with Atosha National Park and we have a fair amount of movement between Atosha and us, especially by elephant. Um, elephant uh, don't respect boundaries or fences and even if they are electrified like parts of our northern boundary, they tend to find ways of breaking that fence. So, you know, a couple of patrols a week looking at that boundary along with all of our foot patrols on the boundaries as well it helps us maintain that fence for Itosha and for us and make sure that it is maintained to a good condition. Another area that we've used the gyroplane for is assisting in our neighbours so I have assisted uh, with patrols and flights on other custodianship farms in our area. So custodian, the custodianship farms I'm referring to are rhino custodians. As mentioned in a couple of the other chats I've had with Franco, Ongava is a member of the Black Rhino Custodianship Program, which means that we are looking after black rhino on behalf of the state. There are other farms or game reserves like us around our region. And in the event that those farms have had issues and they've required air support, we have assisted in that process. We've also assisted in a whole range of social events I wouldn't call it events, but problems. So we had some farmers to the south who had some horses stolen. We assisted with that process as well. So it's proved not only to be a valuable tool for Ongava, but also to the local uh, the community around us, Etosha and our southern neighbours. The reason why gyroplanes are used and why we prefer this particular aircraft is it has, it has some characteristics which make it feel like you're operating in a helicopter more than in an aeroplane. As we experienced this morning in our flight, you are able to slow down to quite low ground speeds, which makes it an ideal stable platform for um, photography and observation of wildlife in this environment. If you're in a fixed wing aircraft, you tend to be flying quite a bit faster and it's quite difficult to slow down, especially mid-air. Because this is a rotor craft, you have that ability. The main rotor, which is above me, is, uh, is not engine driven. It's uh, in permanent auto rotation. So if in the event that you do have an engine failure or you do have to land in the bush, which I've had to do in the past, the speeds at which you are, are coming in and the rolling distance or the land roll when you hit the ground is quite short, which obviously makes it much better aircraft, safer aircraft to operate in this environment. An additional major benefit for gyroplanes over things like helicopters and fixed wings is the, is the hourly cost. They are significantly cheaper to operate than say a, a helicopter or a fixed wing aircraft and thus the platform that you're getting in terms of slow flying aircraft, rotor aircraft at a, at a reasonable price, operating price is a significant benefit to why gyros are being operated on game reserves like Ongava. And that is uh, in a nutshell why Ongava has invested in a gyroplane and why it is proving a very good tool for monitoring 
security anti-poaching um, and uh, operations on Ongava Game Reserve. So this morning's patrol um, started off just at sunrise, so we got up nice and early. There's sort of a period in the day where light is better for looking at animals on the ground, and if the light is coming from an angle, so the sun's just over the horizon, it is easier to observe animals and the bush felt. So we got airborne at about 7, 7.15, and we went on a patrol out to the west initially. We were specifically looking for white and black rhino in that area. We located a fair number of white rhino. These animals were circled, GPSed, and photographed. After that, uh, we headed back towards the eastern part of the game reserve. We did do a few fly, uh, flyovers of some of the other water holes looking for lion. We didn't locate any this morning, but as we moved east, uh, we found some more black rhino, some elephant, and some white rhino. Again, these animals were looked at, circled, photographed, GPS. So those coordinates can be used as part of our monitoring database. So that all gets entered into a main database, which re records all the information about protected and endemic and uh, specially protected animals on Angaba. We did make a turn on the northern boundary just to have a look at the state of the fence and the fire break. We have started cleaning fire breaks along our northern and eastern boundary initially, which was the first part of the fence that we clear. And the reason for that is at this time of, of year, the, most of the winds are from the uh, northeast and the east. So in the event that there is a fire, the real threat is from that direction. So our ranch staff have been out making sure that those boundaries are clear. The other thing we were looking at was uh, we had an adult male lion, which looked like it had been chased out of Ongava by resident males on the property and it had got stuck between the, the two fences. We're double fenced on all sides and Itosha has a small cattle fence which is electrified and a big game proof fence and this lion, male lion had stayed between those fences for about a week. We had made sure it had um, water and it was in good condition but a decision was taken over the weekend with uh, the Ministry of Environment and Tourism to try and attract it back into Etosha National Park. So we flew down that boundary and in inspected uh, that area to see if the lion was still there. It does seem to have moved back into the park. There was no obvious sign of it, so that was a su success. While we were down in that area, we also happened to pick up one of our boundary patrols, anti-poaching unit patrols, who are monitoring and protecting our our fence lines, so their roles are to maintain the fence, check for holes, make sure that nobody is coming over the boundary into an Ongava that could potentially threaten our wildlife here. And we happened to come across one of those patrols this morning as well. After that part of the flight, we started to head back towards the operations base and our runway. We landed after an hour and a half of flying time and it was a success, the flight. I think uh, from a monitoring perspective and what we saw and what we were able to, um, to ascertain from the air this morning, it was a, um, a job well done. We've spoken about monitoring and animals and observation of animals, but it's also very good from a geological perspective and a vegetation survey perspective. So once you're up in the air, you can get a very good idea of what the geology is on the, sort of around the property and how the vegetation ties into that. So while we were up today, we were flying over both hilly areas and flat areas, and it was quite clear, and I pointed this out during the flight, that the effects of overgrazing in the past when Ongava was still a cattle farm in the in the 1970s and 80s. It's still evident in that you've seen these monocultures of Mopani felt or cataphractus, which are outcompeting grass. So I also pointed out this morning on the flight where we have cleared bush to try and reverse those overgrazing impacts, you can clearly see the, the distinction between grassed areas and, well, heavily grassed areas and areas which are, are depleted of grass. And normally that areas without grass are those areas that are still showing those um, signs of of historical overgrazing with bush encroachment. You're not seeing a lot of grass in those areas after the wet season, but you are seeing that in areas we are clearing. So by getting that oversight from the gyro, it helps us um, develop future planning for um, further areas that need to be cleared for bush clearing on Angava. And the reason we do things like bush clearing is to improve habitat, help with fire management, and improve or increase the grazer capacity on Ongava Game Reserve. We would have noticed this morning while we're flying that Ongava is quite a bushy area. It's sort of what we call mixed mapani felt, so there's large stands of Cumifera, Acacia, uh, Mopani felt, Cataphractus, uh, Combritums, and it's, it's fairly dense. So there's a lot of good browns in there, but there are areas that um, can be targeted for bush clearing and improving grazing. We also pointed out on the, on the flight this morning that we have started a new fire management plan, which is clear from the air. Um, we are cutting the, the game reserve into six large blocks. These blocks are defined by large cleared areas along a road. These areas, they fulfill a number of different functions. One, they open up the bush next to the side of the road, so it improves game viewing for our hospitality operations because animals generally come down into those open areas. It improves grazing, so there's more grazing for, for animals like white rhino and zebra species and springbok. And then um, it's acting as a natural fire break as well. So historically, 
<clears throat> when we fight fire and we use the gyro to manage that process, it's quite a reactive process. So you are reacting to a fire that started due to lightning or some other reason, humans playing with matches or whatever the reason is. But you're always reactive and you generally have to fight fire with fire in this environment. So you put in backburns, which can actually be more destructive than the original bushfire. By cutting the, the game reserve up into these big blocks and making them robust in terms of having these grass boundaries on the edges of these blocks. If you are to get a lightning strike in those blocks, then you can um, let that fire burn naturally because in most cases, fires that start naturally, they burn out by themselves. They don't actually require human intervention, but we tend to intervene because we're worried about the consequences of if it burns the whole game reserve down. So we were able to view that from the gyro this morning. We could clearly see those uh, demarcated areas that we're working on in terms of opening up those big fire breaks to allow natural burns on Angava in the future. The other thing we use the gyro for, which I have pinpointed two areas uh, for future dam development. So I wouldn't say easy, but it's, it's much easier to see from the air, the runoff routes of water um, in the rivers on Ongava. So it may sound like a simple thing, but dependent on the season and how much rain we get, there are areas that get better runoff than others. So where we saw the lions on the, on the second day, that was a rain collection point. And we like to develop those rain collection points, those dams, and we have a, have a few more points that are set out on Ongava. And the gyro has been able to help us with that process because we can look at the, um, the runoff into those particular points and where we're going to build those dams. So it's, it's quite helpful in the placement of future dams on the property. You've met John Mendelssohn is the director of the research center. John is very interested in the geology of Ongava and especially sinkholes in the Dolomites, so small caves that occur throughout the Dolomite ranges that occupy about 70% of the southern areas of Ongava. So John and I have done some surveys in the gyro where we, we literally were flying around and because you can fly so slowly with the gyro plane, you can actually sort of weave in and out of these Dolomite ridges and Dolomite ranges and GPS pinpoint potential cave sites which we can then go and have a look at on foot. So there is quite a bit of engagement with the research center and um, the hope is that you know John can then uh, can go to those sites on foot and, in, and investigate them with either a, um, with camera or other forms of technology to have a look at how deep they are and what's what's actually in the caves and what's formed the caves. There are other platforms you can use to look at things from the air like drones, but when you're actually in an aircraft, you can cover quite big distances. The gyroplane forms a, an important part of our security efforts on, on, on Ongava. And I think it's important to understand that, you know, anti-poaching or poaching prevention, as we like to call it here, because we're trying to prevent poaching, as opposed to being reactive after a poaching incident has happened, is all about boots on the ground. So people who are out patrolling, monitoring, making sure that this environment is safe. But you need to add or bolt on technology to that in order to assist it. So the gyroplane is one of those technologies we built. It's only a piece of the puzzle, but it's an important piece of the puzzle because it allows us to get up and above and to potentially look for poachers, potentially look for animals that we're missing. We know maybe ill or, or injured. It's been very successful in that role and in supporting that anti-poaching and prevention effort that we are engaged with on Ongava. You know, the conservation environment in Namibia has changed dramatically over the last 10 to 12 years, especially in, in rhino conservation, in that we are faced with ever-increasing poaching threats from organized crime syndicates who are trying to equip and instigate incursions into our property to kill rhino, to chop their horns off and take those out and sell them onto the black market. So the boots on the ground are the most important part of that program, but the gyroplane and other forms of technology are critical in the support of that role. And the combination of using layers of technology and people um, as a deterrent to would-be poachers coming onto Ngava is, is really what we're about and what we're trying to do.